Game one, Cloud9 jumped out to a huge lead and rode it to an absolute dominant performance. And game two shaped up to be exactly the same. But Team Liquid, well, they had other things in mind, namely this third game on the way now. Welcome back to the Monster Energy Invitational live here on the floor of South by Southwest Interactive in Austin, Texas. Liquid again totaled a 15,000 gold turnaround across the span of about 40 minutes. Managed to just hold on, hold tight, and get a win in game two to give us this third game. And you know, coming into this series, we knew this was, uh, on day one anyway, this was the series that was most likely to go to a game three. Yeah, absolutely. And really, nothing to be disappointed about in game, in game two, which is a command team performance pick. out of Team Liquid. Ember Spirit going to be once again picked up by Cloud9, most likely going to be the third game in a row. We see Sing Sing with that hero. Liquid, though, leads off with a very early pick, Marana. Yeah, I mean, I think specifically they took this just because they don't want C9 to get this Marana on Sing Sing, because they changed it up a little bit. They banned the Visage, they banned the Chen again, and then instead of picking up like an Invoker or something like this, they go and they just steal the bottom from C9. They don't care about this Ember Spirit right now, but yeah, Invoker is still as well in the pool, so maybe we'll see Cloud9 maybe pick that up, but I'm not Five sure if they want to run remaining. Ember Spirit anywhere else but the mid lane, and yeah, they go, just get their off laner, and I wouldn't be Team surprised if we see Liquid just pick up their pick. Invoker here. Yep, very similar look so far, and like you said, uh, the Invoker from Bulba, he started out a little bit slow, had some issues to begin with, but eventually got things back on track. And once again, though, going to go right back to TC's lifestyle. By the time Game 2 was done, TC was just shredding people. Wait a minute. So we're seeing Potom picked up and a lifestealer right afterwards. I'm thinking this is going to be the support Potom by Fluff. Yeah, very possible. Because Bulba doesn't really, I don't, I've never Ten seen him really play this Potom mid. I don't really feel like it fits his style so much. Mm -hmm. So, Five interesting that they did remaining. that instead of deciding to go for this Invoker and just forget about that hero entirely, because that hero bad. is quite a menace. Oh yeah, and you know, to be honest, just from a caster's point of view, it's, it's so fun to watch any match that has a Marana in it. You know, there yeah. tends to be so many, uh, so many opportunities for big plays. And speaking of big plays, Demon on the Bad Rider, he played pretty well in Ten Game 2, and remaining. so did Sing Sing. And you, you kind of pointed this out, when you looked at the box score, it seemed like Sing Five Sing had a great game, remaining. but in terms of just observing the game and watching it unfold, his impact felt Reserve really minimalized, time. especially down the last 15 minutes of that game. Yeah, it's Team like once this Dazzle finished up his eggs and he was just throwing the weave on his teammates and hitting oh, like yeah. maybe one or two people on the other team, Slide of Fist was doing little to zero damage and it just was basically not even there. And yeah, Liquid just taking Radiant out, of course, bang. Eternal Envy's clinks because he plays one mean clinks. Oh yeah, he does. And yeah, I'm really, I want to see how the, this draft's going to end up going. Like, is Cloud9 going to go with a pure aggressive lineup, or are they going to try? And, you know, and that's the thing. Like, you know, Envy on the Lone Druid in game two, Ten he wasn't in bad shape remaining. at all. I mean, we were talking about uh, at, towards the end of the game, or at the end of the game, we were Five staring at the, at the victory board. Um, you know, Radiant Envy dying pick. a couple of times here and there, most notably dying in the Radiant Jungle, and he was just, you know, understandably trying to be sneaky, trying to make something happen, trying to find farm in uncommon places. But right about there was when you just felt everything fall into place for Team Liquid. And, you know, in a lot of ways, Envy just likes to play aggressive, likes to do those kind of things. Farm in weird places, dive tier threes at 10 minutes into the game. Very unorthodox game player. One. Right. And I wonder if that's something they might just, just go all out Ten for. Don't worry remaining. about trying to get, like, an anti-mage or something like that. Or a lone druid pick. And once again, the ancient apparition going to be picked up. So, pick. uh, honestly, we're seeing a lot of the same heroes on both sides just kind of being swapped to and fro. Yeah, and Invoker's still in the pool. Yeah, gonna say it again. It's, it's always it fits it fits so well in all these lineups. The hero just yeah. has so many different things that he can do. The Quas Wex is so powerful, and like we just saw, Boba played a great Quas Exhort build. Even though he had a quite, a quite a shaky start, he ended up just recovering so well because of the way that Liquid just ended up just playing a little bit more passive Ten and just seconds taking remaining. the opportunities when they knew that they could. That Roshan was huge as well. Oh, Five massive! So remaining. massive. And, you know, they hung around just a little bit too long, MSS. And, you know, MSS was kind of up and down throughout that game. Had a few whiffs on a few things. But for the most part, I felt like he played so much better than in game one. Yeah, he yeah. had a very, very solid impact on that game, too. He landed some crucial impales. And that was really one of their, like, main lockdowns. That impale, mm -hmm. plus, like, a cold snap and everything. That bear really just gets melted right after that. If he gets hit by a weave and then Lifesteer gets a couple hits on him, it's pretty devastating if you have a debuff on you as well. Yep, and Demon, also on the, uh, on the Bad Rider, was really... <laughs> Really having some trouble because of the blink. Being Radiant able to blink into the pick. Firefly Trail, as we saw time and time again, pop the carapace and, and disjoint that. Liquid, though, this time going to grab themselves a Vengeful Spirit. Now, you and I 
um, again, we talked so much over the last uh, day or two yesterday, Oops. obviously with setup day and then the other day, about Vengeful Spirit Team and where she fits Liquid's into things. Give me a rundown pick. on how you think she's going to play out now for Team Liquid. Well, of course, it's going to be in the support role. Yeah. But that hero becomes very... The stacking on that hero and the starting stats are amazing on that hero. Although it's a single target hero with a single target stun, this hero does have swap, which is in amazing versus Batrider. Whoever he lassoes, if the Venge is quick enough, he's going to just break that lasso. And then, you know, you have a Venge. A little bit out of position, but he saves whoever that gets, guy gets lassoed. So it's very, very good versus Batrider. And I'm remaining. really happy to be seeing this Earthshaker pick now because this is a hero, I think, that is a little bit underrated Five right now. And he's remaining. really, really good with Ancient Apparition. The uh, taking a look at, at Cloud Nine's lineup so far, and yeah, seeing the Storm Spirit come out, Puck was also available if Liquid wanted to go that way. So instead, uh, opting to just find a, a good way to get the Life Stealer to and from battle or into and out of battle, I should say. But for Cloud Nine, one thing that jumps out immediately is you've got four heroes right now, all four of which can start a fight. All four of these heroes can function Ten as a primary initiator. In one way Not or even only just that. Team Liquid's going to have a really, really hard time pushing towers. Remaining. Their heroes are not really the best at pushing these towers. Yeah, Benjora helps a little bit and, you know, terror and all this stuff and whatnot. But Reserve Cloud9 time. spam, as well as the heroes that they have, it's... It, if the game gets to a point, you cannot break the base. Because yep. Sleight of Fist clears the creep wave, Earthshaker Fissure, and then you have to really worry, because then you can get lassoed, pulled in, and then you're completely out of position, plus AA Blast. Like, it's really devastating. That is a really strong core four right there that they have. I'm waiting to see how they want to round this out. I mean... They could end up surprising us uh, with Team some, Liquid's with you know, to switching bang. up who's playing who. Could be, you know, we've seen Sing Sing once again on Ember Spear twice in a row, and uh, Demon played on the Bad Rider last time and had, for the most part, a good game. A couple of sketchy moments here and there, but one would imagine that's what we're going to see, and it is just Eternal Envy awaiting his hero right Ten now. Team Liquid remaining. likely to run the Storm Spirit in mid. Vinge and Marana, I agree. I think that's going to be a support Five Marana with the Life Stealer farming up. So looking for uh, perhaps an off lane hero now for MSS, but Radiant either way, I, I like the way these two lineups are shaping up, though. I mean, Liquid just has the ability to just blow apart any one target if they happen to, to track them down, and especially with an Ancient Apparition, Ember Spirit, depending on how you build him, even though he does have mobility and can get himself out of a lot of trouble, he can be bursted down pretty effectively. Yeah, absolutely. The thing that, for Liquid that I'm looking at is right now, they do have a lot of damage and everything, but they really lack on their AoE. Yeah. So in team fights, it's going to, right now I'm giving the lineup completely to Cloud9. If they get a decent Ten team fight, if Batrider remaining. gets a, even a semi-decent lasso off, the team fight can really just go completely Five into their favor. So remaining. I think we're going to be seeing a little bit just Liquid just trying to go for little pickoffs, some little cheeky plays coming out from them. So Reserve time. Waiting on the fifth position to be filled. A lot of reserve time on both sides, so could be a minute or two before we see that. But nope, <laughs> there's your favorite hero, my friend. Yeah. Team Doom Liquid's picked up, and I'll tell you what's a, what's a pain is playing a Storm Spirit with a Doom on the other side. Yeah, even playing a Life Stealer is pretty horrible playing versus a Doom, because either yeah. way you're going to get Doomed, and you're just kind of screwed. But that's just why I'm like, I'm not really understanding this Morphling ban. I mean, yeah, okay, Arteezy's been playing it nonstop for the past two days or whatever on his stream, and yeah, it's a really strong hero, but... Banning a Morphling instead of banning out a Doom there, I think that's a pretty critical error. Yeah, well, the thing is, when you look at Cloud9, and depending Ten again on how remaining. they decide to run this, who's going to be farming, who's going to be doing what, I mean, when it comes to just out-and-out late-game carry potential, I mean, it's, even with Liquid, you have Marana who can switch to an off-carry kind of a kind of a role. You've got the Life Stealer. We saw just how hard he can hit. Even when he starts out a little bit slow, he just catches up so quickly or yeah. can catch up so quickly. Ember Spirit as a one, little, you know, both of us kind of wonder, you know, is yeah, it going to work? It could work, but I'm pretty sure we're just going to see, like, the standard Eternal Memory up on this Doom, Pilot Die up on Earthshaker, yeah. Awi up on this Ancient Embracing, Demon up on the Batrider, and, yeah, yeah, of course, Sing Sing up on the Samber Spirit. Yep, and that's kind of what I'm thinking, too, but, you know, one position Doom kind of has the same issues. I mean, when you look at what he can do, his skill set is amazing, but in terms of just the way he scales, it can be a little hit and miss. So, like, looking ahead to the late game, and obviously we're still waiting on one more out of Team Liquid. Just having the Marana and the Lifestealer there, especially if they tried to transition a Marana into any kind of, uh, of damage dealer. I mean, they just are in a good position there. But like, and like you said, though, the issue is how do you crack Tier 3s against this team coming up, say, about 45 minutes in? Yeah, and they pick up this Clockwork. This is, MSS is an outstanding Clockwork player as well. He is very close to the Bulba level, as I would say. So... Yeah, Bulba's clock is thick of legend, so yeah. if, you're, if you're not familiar with that, that is quite the compliment our, our man just dropped on, uh, on MSS, who apparently shook his, uh, his land jitters. You know, uh, what was the yeah. tweet? He tweeted right before we game one that, oh, no, there are people here, we lose, yeah, something he's like, like that. Uh-oh, camera's pointed right at me, guys. <laughs> but, yeah, able to get over that and uh, played very well yeah. in game two. So game three just about to get underway. 
And uh, just a reminder, this will be our final full best of three of the day. This is our second upper bracket match of the day. And following this, not sure how much of a downtime we're, uh, we're going to have. Don't know if it'll be immediately after. Probably 10 to 15 minutes, give or take. Prepare Maybe a little bit battle. more. But we are going to have our ability draft coming up at the conclusion of this series. So make sure you stay tuned for that. For now, though, we're loaded in. Game three of our second best of three of the day. Cloud9 taking on Team Liquid here at the Monster Energy Invitational at South by Southwest. And the lanes beginning to take a little bit of shape. We can see Cloud9 moving out as a pack. Yep, they do not want anyone to get any wards down on their side. They really just want to get out to the lanes quickly, as fast as possible, and everything. And MSS able to get a vision ward down. Not going to be blocking any camps or anything. But And, uh, yeah, they're not going to be able to catch him either. The rest of Liquid just staying safe, going their, uh, their own way. See Demon giving a little, little love to the Bulbino. Grand Bulbino. I'm going to have to <laughs> start calling him that. And yeah, Aoi didn't even start out with sentries this game. He did save money, of course, for it. But that ward being placed so early might go unnoticed. Just possibly. Yep. We see a lot of pinging around the Ancients right now. Yep. And dropping it down onto the Radiant side Ancients. Yeah, they don't want this Earthshaker pulling to those mid-Ancients yep. at all. They do not want some stuff like that happening and just ruining the Storm's lane. Because something like that versus a Storm yep. is absolutely devastating. Yeah, fissuring down the hill like this to pull to those ancients. The battle that begins. was something uh, whenever they extended the range of fissure that you saw a lot for a while and kind of fell off, but still don't want that to be an option even available to them. But so. it looks like that they're going to counter that ward and he really does want to pull that those mid ancients. Yeah, he's <laughs> got sentries on him. And here comes Fluff under cover of the invis. And he's going to poke his nose around a little bit. But should be able to make it back. Let's and look. they do have Sing Sing farming in the bottom lane. It's a dual lane AA with yep. a Ember Spirit bottom. And we have Eternal Envy playing the Doom mid solo. Yep. Well, not mid solo. He does have an Earthshaker behind him. But we're assuming this Earthshaker is going to back up and just try to pull some things. Or maybe even just fully rotate and just, you know, say, screw it. I'm not going to go counter that ward. Yep, Sing Sing farming up the Ember Spirit this time around. Up atop, we can see the arrow. Who barely misses Demon. There was a stun coming out from way too, but. Fluff a little slow on the reaction, so maybe a bit of a missed opportunity there. MSS already tucked up under his tower and has a nice creep wave to soak some experience from. Yep. And I love I love these kind of like lineups too, because like Clockwork in the offlane always, of course, is an amazing hero. But with Potom and all these heroes, if he catches someone in cogs and this Potom is in the right position, that guy can die very, very easily from an arrow in that cogs. So it's very easy to hit, of course. We can see MSS. Making his way over, soaking some experience, trying to get the creep's attention. AUI there popped his chilling touch and giving a little bit of harass, but it looks like MSS should be able to get at least one back. And yeah, he's going to come on over into lane now, so he's going to be doing just fine. Let's talk about this mid matchup, Doom versus Storm Spirit. Obviously, uh, pre-level six, whatever. I mean, it's a melee versus a, a Storm Spirit, so should be quite an advantage for Bulba for the most part. But at the same time, I mean, any kind of pressure they can put on a Bulba early on is going to be huge. Unfortunately, they have great rotational heroes in Fluff and way too. The Binge and the Mirana, great at uh, applying pressure. There's the arrow. Hoo -hoo. A little bit slow again by Fluff yeah. there. Kind of close, but also mid lane as well. Yep, Highlight is doing the pulling. He didn't have the Ancients there that time to pull, but he pulled it into the big camp and denied a full wave from Bulba. So, yeah, Storm Spirit does great versus Doom mid, but if Doom gets the farm free under his tower, yep. that's ideally what he wants. Yep. I want to see which of these two teams is really going to be dedicating a lot of movement time. I mean, when you look at uh, Liquid again, great with Marana and the Vengeful Spirit. But at the same time, whenever you look at what they have, I mean, Ancient Apparition, not the best in that regard, but you do have Pylite on the Earthshaker. He usually does want to move around. Unfortunately, he is extremely low leveled. So if he continues to fall further and further behind, his influence in terms of any kind of movement and any kind of team fight potential is going to be quite limited. Yeah, right now I'm having, I'm having to give like all this to Liquid, yep. because this, they're going to be able to spread out the levels much better, even though they're dire and the dire jungle isn't the best with the tri-lane. But right now, Pylai Dai is still level 1 with zero experience on him. Bat Rider is level 2 with little to not that much experience on him. He does have a stack up at his big camp, but they're going to have to do a lot to recover up on these levels. The XP graph is definitely going to show Liquid way in advantage, advantage right now and in a couple minutes as well. And here comes a little bit of movement. Fluff and Waitsu moving out towards mid. And Earthshaker still hanging around, trying to do his thing. I think they're going to smoke to the bottom lane, like I was saying. Yeah, but maybe they'll go for this mid kill as well. I, I really like these two heroes moving in conjunction with each other, especially with that off lane 
um, with their safe lane rather, completely unoccupied by any off lane hero Radiant's on the side of tower Cloud9. Attack. This should be uh, have a very high chance of success, especially with the clockwork fairly well leveled as well. They're going to run right into AUI, and this is bad news. Yep, AUI caught out. There's the magic missile stun. Arrow to follow it up, and down he goes. Very easy first blood off of the good rotation first coming blood. out of Team Liquid. Nothing it Sing Sing could do, even if he own. wanted to. Has opened with a 2-2 build. Two into the chains and two in the slide of fist as well. But nice rotation, and they're just going to have to be watching for that the entire game, especially once Fluff hits six and he has Moonlight Shatter to use. Yeah, the only thing that's really going wrong for Liquid right now is poor, even though Bobo was having such a great start, this, this pulling is just, of course, extremely devastating. He's only level four and a half right now, and Doom's going to be hitting his level six pretty soon. So pretty rough right now for Bobo, but he can definitely recover as long as he just doesn't get killed. And AUI making his way back through. We can see Demon has gone completely into the jungle. TC benefiting quite a lot from the status quo. He's at 31 CS at five minutes in, and not even five minutes in. So looking to get back to where he was towards the end of last game. And this is what they need. They really just need TC to just do what he does best, farm and then come kill people. Yeah, and I'm not really too sure what's going on in this bottom lane, but Sing Sing is incredibly low on CS. He's only yeah. got nine up on him. So I don't know if maybe MSS is just doing a fantastic job of cogging him away or what, because I haven't really been staring at this lane this entire time, but I think that's a little bit low either way. Yeah, no, I very much agree with you. More rotation, way too, and Fluff once again under cover of smoke. AUI could be the target once again. Don't think they came here for him, though. They're going to go on Envy, and Envy in trouble. Good Fissure, is it enough to buy him the time he needs? Leaps across the Fissure and able to get him. Now here comes Demon though, looking for a return kill. Bulba in some trouble, AUI is right there with him. And that's going to be a double kill going the way of AUI that time around. Up on the high ground we can see Envy going to work on Fluff. Fluff eating a lot of damage, one last auto attack. Brings him down as well. So Cloud9 at the end of that ends up ahead, make it three to two at five and a half minutes in. And Dyer's yeah, we're beginning to see that rotational attack. power on both sides. And as I was saying, they really need to find a way to get this experience split up and perfect timing right there for that for C9. Yeah. They all just reacted instantly right there. The AA and the Earthshaker both were expecting this gank and they were in the perfect Radiant's position for it. Although Doom died, attack. it still was very beneficial for C9 because obviously they got three kills in comparison to one. TC the whole time continues to just farm up, however. And he's going with a Midas build once again. So levels in gold, not going to be that big of an issue for him. This time it's going to come out really quickly as well. Yeah, MSS is fan farming fantastically well in the offlane too. He's second, on the, he's second on the last hits for an offlane clockwork. So doing great up on him as well now. Bulba finds himself a double damage rune. And a regen. Yep. Radiant's top tower and enjoying is that attack. bonus Bulba movement. Here we go. Trying to find someone to jump onto. Sing Sing down in the lane and it looks like yeah they just want to steal the stack they've got four people in this bottom lane now and looking to punish sing 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 just kind of ducking in now the tree trying to keep himself safe elsewhere we see aui has gone to soak experience in the face of tc just wanting to catch up in levels a little bit but Dyer's they have basically completely taken attack. away the radiant side jungle Radiant's even though the tier one still stands and attack. they're pressuring the tier one fairly well yeah and they know that doom is going to resort to going to the jungle pretty soon so fluff doing something very smart and putting an early ward up on this hill toward this Radiant uh, medium camp, toward the mid lane. And a ward behind the bottom lane tower. So they really want to get aggressive early as possible, and they want to take this bottom tower ASAP. Has effectively become an offensive tri lane as Bulba has been here for oh, quite top some lane. time. Oh, he's getting, he's definitely dead here. Yep. AUI caught out, MSS there with him, and TC helping to secure the kill along with MSS. Bat showed up, but unable to get much accomplished. That's probably going to free things up Radiant's for them to continue the pressure here. And Sing Sing might be in some trouble. Yep, they're going to jump on him. Caught Bulba with the chains. Way two's right there beside him, though. Waiting on reactions. The arrow's going to connect, and that'll be a kill for Fluff. He's able to leap away, too. As Sama, EE, tries to chase him down. He's going to get cut off by the air shaker fissure here. Maybe even Bulba might go down as well. Highlight die. Not going to see him. Able to TP away. In the meantime, Bulba could be in some trouble. Here comes Doom and throws out the Doom. And that should be enough. I don't know. Yep, now it's enough damage to secure the kill for sure. Yep. Ends up dying behind his own Tier 1. So it ends up 4-4. to four. Cloud9 all knotted up with Team Liquid as we 
rolled just past eight minutes in. Taking a look at the gold, we can see Liquid is leading quite a bit in terms of pure efficiency gold with all towers still standing on both sides. That's plus 2,500, give or take, in their favor. Yeah, and that was really good decision making there, though. Radiant's Pilot and I could have probably got it. He didn't have vision attack. of him, obviously, so he couldn't get the fissure there, though. But Envy could have kept chasing there and given him the vision. But he decided, you know what? I can go for the storm kill, and that's a much better kill than going for the support bottom. Yep. And Eternal Envy has moved out, now going to work in the jungle a little bit. You can see some rotations, just moving Sing Sing back in the mid now. Envy has already finished up his phase boots, and more smokes being picked up on both sides. And don't think we're going to see that slow down at all. I think both of these lineups are predicated on trying to gain control Radiant's of the game early. Tower yeah, is under and attack. Clockwork actually is getting, he's not really the most leveled. He's got level 7, but he's getting very, very dangerously close to a blade mail already, and it, that's pretty damn early in a game for a blade mail. Moving back into the jungle, Bulba and Fluff looking for targets. This yeah. tier one still standing, at least for the moment, but uh, they might be able to catch Eternal Envy. No, he's actually got a lot of help near him, so probably a good thing Dyer's they didn't see him to try to go for it. Under yep. attack. And AA, oh, he's picking up his level Touché. six relatively early. Not the best, but Radiant's he did get in a pretty decent time. Attack. And also, Batrider looks like he's picking up his blink as he's going back to base right now. Done on Demon. Cloud9 having to commit a lot of personnel down here to defend, but that's all right, because Liquid happens to be committing a lot of personnel to pressure. But all the time, TC benefiting from all the space he has. Already has a bracer up to go with his phase boots. Could be a phase drums build to go with that Midas. AA blast will connect, but not really all that scary. And we see the tower being pinged. It's down to about 237 HP, but early on, Liquid definitely at quite an advantage. Yeah, and... TC doesn't really want to move from this top lane until he gets this tower down. I'm pretty sure as soon as we see this tower go down, it's going to be him rotating all over the storm. And we see Batrider setting up for a gank with Doom on this Lifestealer. And yeah, they're going to get it. Lassoed back, Doom down, TC. Hanging around a quiet part of the woods a little too long. Bulba was looking like he wanted to head in that direction, but too little too late down at bottom now. Liquid wants to try to respond with dropping this tier one. Sing Sing's already there, throws out the remnant, and gets off some decent damage and some searing chains. And just look at that, he threw way too out. And the AA blast, a little tardy, but it's all right. I'm still waiting for a, the first big team fight to really break out. I mean, we saw some action early in mid, but right now both teams are just kind of poking Dyer's and prodding. You know what I mean? Jabbing and attack. ducking and weaving, basically. Yeah, and in the meantime, while we were looking at this top lane, Pilot Die actually got picked off by MSS Clockwork Cook with his blade mail up already, so. Nice. Some pretty good. Radiant's MSS is playing really well right attack. now. His CS dropped a little bit, but that's expected because, you know, you, know, you want to see this Clockwork be moving. And yeah, we're seeing the first Infest gang coming out. Bulba with that haste room. It was spotted, though. It was spotted. Yeah. Radiant's Ward across the river. Tower is under TC loaded in. And they have to, yeah, they know it's coming. They're going to hide in the woods. And Bulba cleaning out the camp on his way through. And here comes the rocket that'll spot them out. And Bulba just cutting creeps right now. Not even trying to jump. It's going to force another TP in. Ice Blast on the way. Actually did catch him. But he's well on his way back to safety. So even though they had the duck and hide for a little while, able to survive that. Yeah, and not really too much happening right now. They're just going to start like picking up a little bit of farm. AOI really does not want this top tower to go down Dyer's right now, but it looks like the, the Infest gank is going to start rotating up there, and AOI Radiant's should be pretty careful. Tower yeah, they know. Attack. Demon's spamping on him. Bulba still has TC inside. Hasn't really accomplished much since they loaded in. Like you said, this tower, though, probably not long for the world. In the meantime, back in their own jungle, they have smoked up. They're going to try to catch a straggler out near Radiant's the uh, middle of the river. Lift's going to be popped. Ice Radiant Blast connects. MSS in a great fortified. position to shoot a hook. Yeah, and, and we see Doom's rushing this mech, by the way. So. Radiant's top tower At least they'll have fallen. that going for them. And yeah, phase drum Midas picked up by TC. Looking pretty damn good for him, even though he got that one death. That was a pretty big kill by C9, but... Shadow. Not quite a knife just yet, and Take we see a pot of multi coming out. They're going to be looking for some kills. Yeah, and I think this is just going to continue so much. Like, both teams really just banking on getting control. Yeah, oh, and Pilot Die is going to get caught out here for sure. Of all the heroes from in the catch, though, that's probably one of the better ones. Yeah, definitely. So Pilot Die <laughs> ends up dying, but, but yeah, you know, Fluff on a killing spree. And we've talked about how he struggled, but this game, he's 4-1. He's in real good shape. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not always the best to be giving the kills to a support bottom at this point, but he's getting a decent amount of farm. He's almost got treads up, and he's got an Aquila and a magic stick, or a magic wand up on his support bottom. 
doing pretty damn good if I would say so myself. And he's starting just to max this arrow build, which I think is pretty smart if you're a support pot. I mean, you really don't have the mana Dyer's to just middle constantly be spamming star and stuff. And you're really only using arrow for these kills anyway, so. Eternal Envy leading the charge down mid. Mech now done on him. Just finished off of the courier using the double damage to chip away at that mid tier one. The rest of Liquid. Beginning to converge a bit on mid, still a bit spread out, actually just heard a hook. And yep, there they come in, manages to get it down, blade mails up as well, and turn Livy in some trouble, however. Damage being done on both sides, and beautiful fissure uphill! And the lasso to follow up on Bulba. So they end up getting Eternal Envy. But it cost them three, as they came in, got a little too grouped up, and ended up paying the price for it. Eight to seven, Cloud nine. Now leads and kills, Pile I Die dodges the Sacred Arrow, attack. and the Tier 1 still not in the best of shape. This is one of the beauties that I love about the AA Earth Shaker combination. If you get a Fissure off on two or three people and they get hit by that Dyer's AA Blast, it's has absolutely devastating to a yep. team fight because that's basically 500 damage, and you guys, are, at this point in the game, you gotta, you're dead or you got to get back. Taking a look at Demon, he's actually beginning to make pretty good progress towards his four staff as well. Already has up his Tranks and his Blink. Way too hooking up with Bulba once again. This bottom tier one still standing, by the way. They've been, seems like they've been trying to pressure it for just about forever. And uh, finally that top tier one did end up dropping, but I feel like Cloud9 is in a really nice position right now. And yeah, they've already cut that lead that Liquid had generated basically in half. So uh, doing their best Liquid impression from game two. Game two, Liquid. Fell behind early, fought their way back, and Cloud9 certainly <laughs> doing the same thing now. Yeah, and they got the, the XP graph is completely evened out as well, so. MSS, loaded up. TC not spending as much time farming as he is riding around in other heroes, at least for the moment. There's a Moonlight Shadow, and they're going to try. This could be a huge fight because there's four down here already, and they're collapsing three into four. And way two. Not the best place to fight, though. Yeah. AA ult is down for another like 15 seconds or so. So if they do get a good catch, it could be decent. But that Doom's got mech and Doom up right now. So I don't know if they really want to be going for that. And yeah, Venge gets spotted behind the tower now. Bulba at MSS. Retreating. Way too will be able to make it away as well. And I totally agree with you. And tell you the truth, if they had decided to go on that, it would have felt either very erratic or very desperate. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it was a good choice of them just to like back away. There's no point in them trying to like rush that at all. And AY is actually doing really well for himself. He's level 8, he's got his Triangle Boots, he's got his Point Booster up on his way to his eggs on yep. this AA. Oh, yeah. And taking a look at the overall net worth. We see TC, to nobody's surprise, sitting right at top. He's got 72, uh, 7,200 total net worth. Behind that, there's Doom and the Bat. Bulba right there on par. It's basically everyone within each other very, very closely after uh, TC and Eternal Envy. And, uh, yeah, th this is just, like, it's such a close game already. And, really, both teams are just looking for anything on which to gain some momentum to begin to separate themselves out. And even Pile I Die, who was level 1 for what seems like forever, he's caught up. He's level 7. Not all that bad. Yeah. And the only thing I see, like, the only bad thing I really see for right now for Liquid is Bobo doesn't really have the greatest start. His CS isn't bad. He's level 10, so decent levels, but he's pretty damn far from that Orchid. He's just about to finish up his first Oblivion staff, so... Yeah. Unless they get, like, you know, this bottom tower and maybe another tower and a big team wipe or some couple big pickoffs, it's going to be a pretty late Orchid. And whenever you figure in, I mean, Orchid against the Bad Rider in particular, against the Ember Spirit, very, very important. Um, yeah. Especially the Bad, just being able to take him and his advantage out of fights very, very quickly. Yeah, or even if Doom. you can get the possible on the Doom, of course. Yeah. But Doom does have the mech complete, so, I mean, he can use that even when he's Orchided, so... Both teams looking like they're willing to take a breather and settle back into their respective corners, just try to find some farm and develop their items. And uh, check that. As I say attack. that, looks like Cloud9 deciding to go ahead and try to mass push this bottom lane. Looks like they're going to try to trade the Tier 1 in mid for it as they've already got TC and Fluff in position. Yeah, and Demon's already setting up now for this mid tower. He's got his Blink and his four staff up. So, and we see the AO flying already. Attack. So someone in mid lane's definitely going to get picked off here. Structures are fortified. And there it is. Trying to chase down TC, but the cogs Beautiful went Beautiful cogs by MSS. Yep. This joining the attempted attack. initiation down at bottom. We actually see Pilot Eye buying time. Bulba's going to go ahead and jump immediately after him, though. We'll be able to grab him out. Wait is right there to follow up the magic missile. TC comes in and... Uh, oh, yeah, he cut off the Echo Slam. But... Uh, yeah, not a whole lot doing as just very quick uh, reactions out of Liquid after the nice cogs out of MSS 
bought them time to make it away. But C9, they fake backed, and they're looking to try to make something happen here. Lasso was never actually used by Demon. Yeah, those those cogs actually saved them from a pretty bad point. And Demon's, Demon's looking for a pick really much so right now. Moving up beside the tower, and going to grab MSS. Showing off the four staff. Envy's right there with him. And pops the blade mail and gets down the cogs as well. Now the follow-up on Eternal Envy. And managed to get the clock down, but here comes TC going to work. He's going to be doomed out, and Sing Sing right there with him. Blink ahead from Demon, trying to right-click him down. Nice searing chains. Wow. And a triple kill goes to Demon when all was said and done. And just like that, after some nice plays from Liquid and the ability to track down the Earthshaker again, it's four for nil, and they take not just the Tier 1, but now ready to bring down the Tier 2 bottom as well. And that, yeah, that was an absolutely massive team fight from C9. That actually turned... That gave him such a big advantage now. AA is yep. getting close to his level 11. He's getting closer to his Ags. Demon just got about 1,500 gold from that team fight. But this is the power of that AA debuff, yep. plus even like any DOT. So the Firefly was on the ground, and two people actually just ticked and died from it. I'm not even sure. They probably, they probably didn't even see the Firefly on the ground. And for the first time all game long since the Horn Blue, C9 is actually in the lead. Yeah, and they, <laughs> the XP graph shows it a lot more than that gold graph right now. Yep. That team fight actually just gave them so much. Although Pilai died, died. Yeah. He's a little bit behind right now, but it makes up for it with everyone, everybody else's farm. Oh, yeah. But just one of those situations where you never want to give up anyone if you can help it. But if you're going to give up someone, the five position ES is probably the best one you're going to give up. Yeah, absolutely. It will be another Sanj coming out for TC, likely to be the SNY follow up to the drums phase. Pilai die, broke as a joke, 800 gold, brown boots, and a stick in his pocket. And but it looks like yeah, Envy's going to be going for a Shiva. So he picks up a plate mill after that team fight. Yep. And it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. He needs the mana pool, and Shiva's overall is a pretty underrated item. It's a, such a strong item. Yep. People really underestimate how much the attack speed really does slow, and all of, the, all of it really gives to you. Yep. It's one of those items that, yeah, it has a, a big cool effect, but you tend to think of it just like, oh, there's the effect, and there's the damage and everything else, and certainly the stats are nice. But you forget, again, the, the under-the-hood tweaks, the things that it changes that aren't quite as noticeable to the naked eye, especially amidst all the chaos. It does make a pretty big difference, especially when you factor in you know, what you're up against. You're up against a Lifestealer, up against a Marana, and so on. Yeah, and this, I mean, this is kind of what I was saying. This last team fight really showed a big thing of what I was saying about this, the team fighting. C9's team fight is just way more powerful, Dyer's especially if Demon gets a decent attack. lasso off, and which he did. He got a great lasso off on, on Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Speeding the clock. Moving into position. Might try to take a shot. If he does, though, it'll be going in all by himself. There's no one from his team anywhere near. And yeah, just going to hang around and wait to come. Soak some gold and some levels. Elsewhere on the map, we can see TC. Yep, S&Y build it is. He's got both halves done, or just about done, as he picks up the Blade of Alacrity. And not long now from having that finished up. But in terms of net worth, and we were just actually there, he still maintains top spot. He's about 1,200 gold ahead of Eternal Envy at the moment. But C9 does have six of the top, or four of the top six farmers right now, which is really good for them. And I actually thought Pilot Die was going to go for this rushing blink build, but he, he buys his arcane boots instead. I guess he realizes he's not really the one who needs to be initiating on this. The Bat Rider is going to lasso, and that's the way the team fight's going to get initiated anyway. So yep. he does not really need this blink dagger that early. Yeah, and I don't mind that at all. I mean, they have such a good reactionary team, like trying to draw um, Team Liquid into fights, especially when you're talking about a life stealer or a Marana who tends to leap and commit. Hang on, speaking of Lasso, there's going to be the follow-up with the hook, and it actually hit TC. TC's going to infest. They're going to catch MSS out and clean him up. The rest of Liquid has to pull back, though, as they, uh, yeah, TC finally infests out. He's actually going to be doomed right off the bat. Still trying to chase him down. They don't have a Lasso up, obviously, but... Have him down to half health, and now this tier two in mid in trouble. There's a Marana arrow, dodged. Very well done by Cloud9. They will not allow that to catch up with him. Mech gets him back into fighting shape near full health. But uh, Liquid, yeah, they end up giving up a death. Radiant tower still standing, tower not a whole lot of damage attack. done to it either. Yeah, and C9's pulling pretty decently far ahead with these kills. I mean, they're getting some pretty good priority kills. They got the clockwork there. They didn't end up getting the life stealer, and Doom was used. So now Liquid will definitely opt for taking a tower down that they know. Doom is Radiant down and Lasso is down. Are fortified. No shot, gonna be wide. Nice fissure, caught two. TC trapped in a little bit. And this is what I was saying about these tower pushes. Yep. You see this? It's actually absolutely ridiculous. Because you walk in, and if two or three of your people get hit by this AA ulti, and then a fissure, and then a flame break, and blah, 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 it all, it all just, just being. It really just cripples you, and you have to back up. And yeah, this is what happens now. They can't even get this tower, and now the Lasso on TC. Yep. 
Nothing but a delay. Just delaying buying time. And that's it's quickly becoming apparent that when Liquid wants to push a tower, they have to commit immediately. Like yeah. if, if they um, see an AA, an AA ulti come out or they know Lass is on cooldown, there's no, well, we'll push and slow push. All you're going to do is allow all of those short ultimate cooldowns to come off, and you're just going to be engaged upon, and that's going to happen. You're going to end up losing your carry for free. Yeah, and AOI picks up his level 11 there, and now he's 600 from his Ags, so that's a very early level 11 and going to be a very early Ags on a support AA. All fluff bottom. Pop with the Ice Blast. Got that's going to take him down. Yep. Trying to make a run for it, and yep, there you go. Ends up dying, and that should be just about AUI's uh, staff done. Yeah, he needs about another 250 gold, and he'll have the Ags up. Yep, very well done by him. Here we go. Dyer's up top, the top is trying to put some pressure on Bulba, wants no part of it. He's just going to bail out and let things go as they may up in this top lane. Yeah, now the Shivas is finished up by Envy as well. So now they're going to look to probably go for even more. They're just going to go for trying to barrel down all these towers as fast as possible. Yeah, Demon's spamping in this top tower. Coming in. Finally, we see the Orchid done on Bulba. And he's going to have to be a big influence starting right now. I mean, you take a look. 6-2 and two on AUI as he's had a phenomenal game. 4-0 and oh for Demon. He's been looking great. Fluff at 4-3 and three is the best for Liquid. And he started great but slowed down a little bit after that. 2-3 and three for Bulba, just very uncharacteristic. And they can't afford to have Get that on. out of their Storm Spirit. Yeah, I mean, it's not even like Bulba's been playing bad at all. He just... That, those those ancient poles and those Dyer's those big camp poles and the fissures just really are devastating. Uh oh, TC again. And they're gonna jump and be able to clean him up. Here comes Envy as well. TC trying to fight through it does end up dropping. Fluff is there with him. Bulba could be in trouble as well as Sing Sing pursues them both out. They don't have any vision, but it wears off and there's the searing chains to catch Fluff out. And Fluff, who started so well, has now died a number of times in a row. Up at top, MSS actually whiffs on a hook on the pile I die, and a good thing for Pi. If that had connected, he would have been dead for sure. But another ugly turnaround, and a game that looked to be so close, and hang on, could be even worse, as we see, oh, MSS, they know where he is. They're going to go right for the tower. Dyer's top and tower just waiting on attack. the glyph to wear off. And there it is. MSS, Dyer's not enough for a hook. They're going to try, yep. To re-engage oh, Bulba. going to die here. And, yep, Bulba in a lot of, and they got him. Pile I die actually kills him. Gets off the Echo Slam, he's still alive, and MSS might be next on the list. AUI right behind him, trying to auto-attack him down. There's the Blade Mail popped, and Pile I Die. Yeah, he beat that back, buddy. You earned it, patting himself on the back for some decent plays in that top lane. 19 to 8. Beauty of the AA Earthshaker. Yes. I love, I love how much damage it just really can pour out instantly. We're at 26 minutes in, and this game is looking to be all C9. They have now turned this game around and went from trailing nearly 5,000 gold at just 13 minutes in. Double that, and they've turned it completely around and now hold the biggest lead of the game. Well played. Very well played, yeah. And Envy finally just pulled ahead of uh, TC's Lifestealer up on the net worth. Yep, take a look at the net worth. You can see not by much, but still has pulled ahead nonetheless. And C9 is just outmaneuvering Liquid right Dyer's now. And, you know, this was such. This attack. this was honestly beginning to look like a game that could have gone for 50, 60 minutes, and it still yeah. very well could. I mean, it's not insurmountable on either side by by any stretch. But the way C9 is playing right now, they just found their groove, and they are just choking this map out from Liquid. Liquid, it feels like they can't go anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And. AUI has uh, been playing absolutely spectacular. So has Pilot Die. They're both just sinking. They sink so well together. Their teamwork is just impeccable. This tier 2 mid, one of only two outer tier towers remaining for Team Liquid. Tower Looks to be attack. the next target. It's down to about half health. Liquid going to dodge this entirely. Wants no part of it, perhaps anticipating a rotation at the top. Arrow comes through, busts a creep in the mouth. But yeah, AA, Ice Blast. Oh, never mind. Let's see. Rocket, of course. But, yeah, this is going to be another tower Dyer's brought down. Tower what can Liquid do, my friend? I mean, it's not, again, it's not like it's totally out of reach. They could just capitalize on some mistakes Dyer's or make a big player or two. Fallen. But as it stands, they've just lost so much map control. Yeah, they lost a lot of their momentum that they had. And TC, although he did have a ton of farm, he's not really doing much with it. He's 1-5, in five and it's not really showing. He's just getting constantly getting doomed, lassoed, and just... He can't really do much. There's nothing he can really do. And the Venge, I don't really feel like after this early game, the Venge has done too much. Yeah. I haven't really seen, I don't think I've seen a single swap this game. And he's just not really having the biggest influence anymore. Uh, you know, taking a look at TC's inventory, 
or not TC, but Fluff. I almost wonder if he wasn't so optimistic he, he was thinking about a Midas. He actually picked up a glove of haste after his dreads were done. Yeah, it might have been a possibility for sure. Yeah, and since then, he just has literally built nothing. Like, he has had five, 600 gold in his inventory pretty much the entire game. TC, little isolated out, could have been in trouble there. Demon looking for a target. Might find it in MSS if he cuts through the trees. And nope, unable to catch up with him. So Liquid able to dodge yeah, a fight that time. Off. Yep, and that was good, some, just some good movement right there. And we see the Earthshaker picks up his Blink Dagger now, and Doom picks up a Blink Dagger as well. Radiance top tower Looks like they're ready to attack. just go straight up to the Tier 3s. They know, they have the advantage, and they know Liquid is kind of just... In the middle of a fire drill, just trying to find a way to get this game back under control. They can't exactly trade a Tier 3 for a Tier 2. That's not an option, so split pushing not going to work in this instance. Yeah, they're going to need a really spectacular team fight and definitely a buyout in order to defend this. Yep. Speaking of buyouts, we can see Demon doesn't have one, Envy doesn't have one, Bulba actually doesn't have one, and that's important. He's going to jump in. TC's right there. And Envy, oh, nice counter initiation on the Demon. Gets the lasso off on the TC. Can they follow it up? That's the question. We already lost Doom, but TC will drop in response. And honestly, I don't know what they could do. MSS yeah. still has Hook, but that's Rax. Yeah, they're going to have a really hard time. Yeah, there's the buyouts that needed to come out yeah, for okay. sure. They're going to back out. That's exactly what they wanted yeah. to force, and that was just really well played. And right there, they got, they got, even though they got the Doom before he used basically anything, he did get his mech and his Shivas and his Scorched Earth off before he died, but he did not get the Doom off. Yep. And that's... That's pretty damn crucial. Radiance so they did get the tower, tower at least though for C9. Attack. And they forced a buyout out of the Life Stealer. So now it looks like Liquid's going to go either straight for a Roshan or something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they're just pushing. No, they're going to go for this Desperation Roshan because they really do need to. And TC, as you mentioned, losing quite a bit of gold there. Forced the buyout. Otherwise, it was going to be Rax. 30 minutes in. C9 more than doubling them up. And even this Roshan is not dropping nearly as quickly as they would like. And Cloud9 might even have time to get there and stop this. Yeah, they really are. That's not a place that Liquid wants to fight at all. Uh, it looks like they might suspect it. Yep, here we go. Demon's going to move in to check it. And there you are. Yep, they know. They can't hang around. They have to get out of that pit. And Cloud9 able to prevent the Roche turnaround or the Roche dropping anyway. And now moving into Cloud9's jungle. And C9 might just take another run up mid and just say, okay, come fight us again. Yeah, that's all they really need to do with their lineup. They just have, they can just pick the fights. The only way that they can lose a team fight is if one or two of them get picked off in like a terrible, terrible position. Smoked up, moving down mid. The rest of Liquid, still nowhere near. Bulba locked and loaded with TC on board. They're just going to rush right up and take a look. And yeah, finally, they're going to reveal themselves. Immediate pings Dyer's coming out. Barracks are under attack. And are they just going to give Rax up for Roche? Surely not. Yeah. No, they're going to no, try to get not. home. But yeah, but Bobo just spent his gold too. He doesn't have a buyout now. And, oh, they see them. They have a word up on that. Like Bobo gets grabbed. Oh, lassoed back. He's got TC inside. Bulba drops. Oh, nice swap. And TC going to work now on Eternal Envy. Does get the Doom off in the meantime. Way too trying to make it away on the side of that. Fisher's there. But... Not on time. However, AUI gets the mega kill thanks to the Ice Blast. That's two for one. They get three as Fluff is next to drop. And that just about might be it. And it is. GG. GG call. Very well played by both teams, though. That swap, oh, yeah. it was one of the first swaps of the game, but that was a very good swap to save Bulba. But yep. too little too late. Yep. They did try their best. MSS played an outstanding game that game. I'd have to give him the MVP for Liquid, at least. But other than that, AUI, these Ice Blasts on point. Highlight Eye and him just, sure. just sinking so well together. They're always in the right position. They knew that this Doom was going to get ganked early on in this mid lane, and they were just sitting behind him, and they got that return triple kill. Honestly, I think AUI is just really, it's so hard. I mean, Sing Sing played so well, and he got so, we gave yes. him so much credit. But AUI, when you look at what he's been able to do across the entire series as a whole, even the game they lost, yeah. I think he's got to be the MVP, man. Like, he was just, yeah, it's got to be close. I mean, he was all point. He played spectacular as well, though. Yeah. Look, he came out 7 0 and 12. He got a lot of lassos off this game. He got a very early blink. Yep. Blink 4 step was up at what? Like 15 or 16 minutes, which is just. It's really what you want on a bat rider because it's just you end up just being able to snowball out of control once you get a bunch of pickoffs with that hero. Yeah. And you take a look at Demon and AUI between them, they were 14 and two yeah. on a bat and an and, uh, ancient apparition. And they were part of the majority of the kills. Yep. Demon was part of what 19 of the kills out of 20 for AUI. And 20, 20 for AUI. Yeah, that's just absurd. Some some damn good play. No joke. And you take a look at TC. I mean. Dying seven times, 2-7-2 for him. Uh, struggled a bit here. Certainly played a good lifestealer in game number two. 
Uh, but for the most part, just unable to get things in gear. And same with Bulba. I mean, he finishes 3-4-3. Three, and three. The Orchid eventually did come out a little yeah. bit later than he would have liked. And like you said during the game, it wasn't necessarily that he was playing um, just terribly or anything like that. He just never really felt like he could get things in gear. And even in MSS, we saw some good plays. But I, I think you can sum it up by saying Liquid made good plays here and there, but it never translated to a yeah. win. And they never really had anything. They can't really break towers versus the lineup they're against. They were trying yeah. and trying and trying, but then they would just get smacked down, and then they'd end up losing more than they really wanted to at those points. Well, the upper bracket is done for today, but we're not done entirely with Dota. We have a fun match coming up soon. That's going to be our Ability Draft All-Stars coming up following a short break here, so make sure you stick with us. Once again, Team Liquid falls to Cloud9. Cloud9 will advance to meet EG to lead things off tomorrow, while Team Liquid, in an elimination match, will square off against EHUG tomorrow as well. I may see that's Fog. Not sure exactly how much time we're going to be taking. Probably going to let the players take a break, and uh, we've already got them uh, already got them split up. But before we look ahead to our next match, let's go ahead and go straight to the stage with Anna, who's interviewing our winners. Hello again, guys. I'm here with Pylai Dai from Cloud9. Let's hear it for them after a very convincing series. How are you feeling about your team's performance after that series? Uh, I'm pretty satisfied. I'm a bit disappointed in game two. I think we really should have won that game as well, convincingly. But overall, I'm really satisfied. Tell me a little bit about game two, from draft to through the end. You know, um, did your thinking change? Did you have a strategy planned and then change it based on the draft? Or did you come in and do exactly what you planned and it just didn't work? Tell us about what was the deciding factor in that game. I mean, the deciding factor was for sure uh, the Roshan we tried to get, where we, uh, we got three man wiped, plus giving them the Roche. Uh, about the heroes and the strat, like, uh, it, it was basically all according to the plan. Like, I just think it was some individual mistakes that lost us that game. Else we would have snowballed hard and won the... After game two, you know, taking that loss, what does it take to get yourself back in the mental state to come back and win game three? Uh, I mean, some time passed. Uh, you, you sit there during the drafts. And then eventually, like, you, you start playing, you talk about the new game, the new lanes, what you're gonna do, and then, like, you forget about it. Great. Well, you're moving on to face EG tomorrow. Are you confident that you guys will be able to take them on? What will you have to do to keep them under control? Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident. It's hard to say. That. I think they're the strongest team now uh, in this tournament, just because of uh, us and Liquid having stand-ins. But like, if you saw the last game, Demon sick ass performance. So with uh, if he can perform like that, I, I see us taking them out. All right, well, we can't wait to see it. Thank you so much. Again, great job. Guys, we're going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, some Ability Draft madness in store for you. Stay tuned. 